please. Baker. Here. Cox. Here. Dominic. Present. Escadet. Here. Jenkins. Present. Lynn. Present. Lynch. Here. McCulloch. Here. Here. Present. Smith. Thibodeau. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Would Commissioner uh, Baker lead us in prayer and Commissioner Dominic in the pledge, please? Let us bow our heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for another day that you have allowed us to see. And we pray and ask that you would touch our hearts and our minds, enable us to make the right decisions for your people. Father, we thank you for everything that you are doing for us this far. And we send out a special blessing for the bereaved families today. And certainly a special blessing for our sick brother, uh, Louis McCulloch. And we pray and ask that you would touch his body and heal him in a special way. And also strengthen his wife, Rose, Father God. And give her the strength that she needs, Father mm -hmm. God, to continue to be with him and support him. We love you. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Place flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> all right, are there any ad agenda additions from anyone? Okay, being none, we have special resolutions. You ready to do that, Todd? Yes, sir. All right. A special resolution of recognition proclaims Corey Palms Moore Day in Caddo Parish. So moved, Mr. President. Second. Been moved by uh, Commissioner Jenkins and seconded by Commissioner Pearson. <coughs> Passes unanimously. We want you, we want you up there. We want you, John. In the name and by the authority of the Caddo Parish Commission, a resolution of recognition to Tory Palms Moore. Whereas the Caddo Parish Commission is pleased to acknowledge and recognize the meritorious and laudable actions displayed by citizens of this parish and for the efforts they render in behalf of citizens of this parish and this state. And whereas Ms. Tory Palms Moore has given many hours of service to her community serving as a dedicated and respected teacher at Shreve Island Elementary. It was in that setting in the school's cafeteria that she was called upon to access her inner strength and prior life-saving training to come to the aid of and perform the Heimlich maneuver upon a student who was choking. And whereas Ms. Palms Moore was so affected by this experience that she began to ponder the need for school safety and life-saving training be required for all school personnel throughout the state for them to be ready to respond quickly and effectively in almost any medical emergency that might occur on campus and whereas her concern led her to state representative Roy Burrell who sponsored House Bill number 1396 to require local public school boards to provide first aid training for school employees who participate in any required in-service training program. Ms. Palms Moore applied her determination and resolve in pushing this passage of this bill, which came to be titled the Tory Palms Moore Act. Huh. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Caddo Parish Commission meeting in legal and regular session the 21st day of October, declare and proclaim Thursday, October 21st, 2010, to be Tory Palms Moore Day in Caddo Parish, Louisiana, in recognition of her outstanding service to the citizens of Caddo Parish. Here, here. I was just glad that God used me to help save a child. <laughs> well, I want to take this opportunity to uh, to recognize uh, Tori because she was one of my my students. Uh, you say, well, being a student, uh, I mean, where did you teach her? Well, it was in a summer program that we had the uh, opportunity to uh, have in our community that was actually funded by organizations like your, yourself. Sometimes you wonder where your money goes, but it was 
that training, along with other trainings that she's had, that gave her the opportunity to be here today and to be recognized. Um, Mr. Chairman, and, and I want to recognize my uh, parish commissioner and soon to be councilman. Um, after I looked in and started researching this, what seemed to be very simple process, uh, it was it was very interesting to me that some statistics came out how many kids actually die because of something what you consider very simple, but it is not simple at all. And given the fact that the mother of the child that you saved was actually fighting for us in Iraq. And can you imagine her feeling when she found out that her child almost died? Uh, just several statistics, and I'm, uh, and I'm through with it, because I think it's important that we recognize how important this is. Not so much the fact that the bill is done is that, that she would take the initiative to, to do this, and now it is something that will be done all around the state. <clears throat> Total of 3,000 deaths per year. Uh, we're looking at an average of 6.4 days in the hospital for these type of incidents, $34,652 cost per person that, we, that uh, wind up going to the hospital under these circumstances. Uh, it will not cost the state anything, and not only that, these teachers can be trained uh, by school nurses, by physical ed uh, persons, as well as fire departments and others. So I think that this is a, a very, very simple bill, but a very, very important bill. And I'm so glad that you had the opportunity to, to uh, be the one. Thank you. I am quite pleased that I'm afforded the option of having Tori as my daughter. And it's a simple skill that we take for granted that many know. But having not had it, the training myself for quite a while, having gone to Detroit this summer, it was offered in one of our conferences. And I sat in, and I am now certified self. And I encourage all to let this be a proliferation of, an, of a skill that we can all obtain to save the life of someone else. And my daughter was pregnant possibly about eight months. So it afforded a little difficulty in her using the effort to, to do the the skill with her, but she was able to orchestrate it. In that, I'm pleased. Good evening. As a school board member and my good friend here, I just want to say when the bill came to us, and when, when we heard about Tori, then I thought about too, how I've been in the classroom 34 years. Carl is a PE teacher, coach. If that had happened to me, I don't know what I would have done, but started hollering. So, and that's true, because I wouldn't know. But now that this bill would pass, we, have, we also honored her. And we also going to make sure that teachers are trained to save our babies. I'm like him. If a lady's over the child, mother over there in Iraq fighting for us, then you hear that your baby been choked to death and nobody knew what to do. So I'm just thankful for Tory, also for the system now and the state that we will have someone train our teachers to save the children's lives. Thank you. Next uh, resolution, please. A special resolution, remembrance for Reverend Dr. Murphy L. Hunt. Hello. Second. Moved by Commissioner Lynch, seconded by Commissioner Jenkins. That passes unanimously. Want to read this one? No, we're going to do it. No, we're going to do it later, later date. Okay, next item, please. Special resolution pro proclaiming Foster Parents Volunteer Day. So moved. We'll move Second. by Commissioner Lynch, seconded by Commissioner Pearson. Any discussion on that motion? Without exception, it passes. Commissioner Lynch, passing this one to you? Okay. All right. Next, we have communication reports. I have nothing from the commission that we had already talked about. All right. Then we'll move on to citizens' comments. Uh, I've got some people here to address the commission. Anyone who would like to address the commission on any matter other than zoning, if you haven't filled out a card, if you'll fill out a card and get it up here. First, we have Miss Gloria Frelo.
she here? Yes, she's coming. Okay. <coughs> Mind everyone, please limit your comments to three to five minutes. State your name and address for the record, please. Okay. My name is Gloria Prelo. I reside at 6042 Alaska Lane, Shreveport, 71107. Thank you. Also, um, well, I'm here to address a conflict between um, Lakeview Waterworks District and my husband and I. We are currently building a house at 6644 North Lakeshore Drive. And we have had an ongoing situation with them concerning the water, uh, water lines. Uh, we first were told that we couldn't get the water uh, from them. We were closer to Blanchard. That turned out not to be the case. So uh, they did put water lines down, but my husband and I feel like they overcharged us because I have an invoice here that shows the company that put the lines down, put two one-inch lines down, and we only needed one, and that's what we were trying to pay for, is for our lines to our house, not a one-inch line to the neighbor's house. The neighbor is uh, one in next door to us. No building is on that property. It was just purchased by this couple, and that water line that they put down passes the neighbor's house to ours. Uh, my husband did look in the hole where they dug to put the one-inch line in. There were two lines. There was only one going to our house. The other one stopped somewhere between uh, the neighbor's house and ours. But uh, I have sent them a letter uh, our lawyer sent them a letter to ask them to reimburse us for half of what the water cost. And in, in the past three months, we have gone to meetings. Uh, Commission McCullough attended a meeting with us along with uh, Parish Attorney Charles Grubbs and Public Works Director uh, Woodrow Wilson. None of the things mentioned in that meeting were done by the board. <coughs> they have not followed through on what we asked. So I'm asking this commission to do something so that we can get our money back. Also, the board meetings I've attended have been atrocious. The board members don't know parliamentary procedure. They were not even aware that uh, a person, uh, myself, could attend a board meeting. Uh, one board member asked me to leave after the regular session started, but Jerry Jones, the lawyer, was there to intervene on my behalf. And so it, it, there some, needs to be something done to where the board members know what they're doing and are more organized. I'm sure I'm not the only person that some things have happened to, but I'm just very vocal to try to get something done. <coughs> And I'd like to leave a copy of the letters that I've sent uh, and the receipts where we paid for our water and also the invoice that the water company gave us. That's okay. Okay, Ms. Prelo, if you'd give that to Mr. Grubb, and uh, <clears throat> I'll get with him after this meeting, and we'll see what we can do to follow up on it. Thank you for pointing out uh, the problem that you had at the board meetings. I think perhaps it may be prudent of this body committee to uh, develop a plan for all of the boards in which we appoint in the future, when new board members especially are appointed, that they're brought up on the rules of public meetings and just the basic rules of conducting meetings so that uh, they're all complying because I'm sure Thank that's you. a problem somewhere. Thank you. Um, Ms. Lynch, do you have anything? Mr. Dominic. Ms. Prelo, yes. um, I had a couple of questions. Oh, sure. um, you still in, working in Vivian? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I'm now working at Alexander Learning Center. Is, it, is this the problem? Because I knew you were in Ms. McCullough's district. Where you're moving, is it still in Ms. McCullough's district? or is that? I, I believe so. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, I just it's kind of overlapping right in yeah. North Lake Shore, so I was unsure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. <coughs> Next we have... Uh, Willie Washington, please come forward. State your name and address for the record. 
My name is Willie G. Washington. My address is 9681 Highway 169, North Belgium. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. It gives me great pleasure today to stand here and be able to speak with the parish commissioners. I will be brief. Uh, I'm the chairman for the Clean Water Access Committee. We live in an area in a community just outside of Belcher. We have private water wells. Our private water wells has gone bad. The water is undrinkable. You can't cook in it. You can't wash in it. You can't even take a bath in it. It smells musty and smells like sewer. Three water system in our area refuses to serve our needs. Bell de Gill, Oil City, and Blanchard. Some of the members were told that it was too costly for them to extend their pipes to service our community. We have collected over 73 signatures from homeowners who wish it to be, be provided with potable water. We have tried on numerous occasions to connect with our elected officials, but with no response. We have gone to the public health department and met with a group called Community Resource Group. They reassured us that this is a major health issue. We have prepared, we have prepared a small package for all the commissioners to read and to look at and see what we're up against. The only thing that we would like to solve here today is to get an appointment or some type of possibilities and ideas from our parish commissioner. <coughs> we need help with this situation and we need it badly. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. I, I got your letter. Are you the one that sent me the letter the other day? Yes, sir, I am. Um, Mr. Wilson has been out of town. I, and I, you know, one time we talked about meeting with Mr. Wilson, and um, he's not here. But, Randy, I want to contact you tomorrow morning, if you don't mind. And um, me, yourself, you know, Mr. Wilson, and we're going to need Charles or Donna to meet up here in Government Plaza to see if, if there's anything that we can do to help these people out. We talked about doing, you know, I know we can do a water district, but I don't know what all that entails. Um, but uh, Randy, call me tomorrow morning around 9 o'clock, if you don't mind. Will do. And um, I'll try to, con we'll just do a three-way conversation. I believe I have your number, you and we will try to set something up next week, if that's okay. I really appreciate it. You all that have the package, please look at them, review them. If you have any questions on anything in the package, please give me a call. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Washington. Next, we have Kevin Schmidt. <coughs> I'm Kevin Schmidt. My address is 216 Texas Street, Louisiana 711 I'm here uh, just asking a simple, uh, having a simple request. I own two companies that specialize in renovating adjudicated properties. We purchase adjudicated properties from the parish. And we purchase a lot of adjudicated properties from the parish. We have 24 construction crew members that uh, rely on us buying these properties to continue their work. And I just would like some sort of resolution, either past $200, 300 500 whatever the number is, so we can continue to renovate these houses in blighted areas and keep these people working. And I don't know how long that process is going to take. And, and I'm stuck because we haven't been able to put in applications for several months now to buy new properties. And I know that it's in committee now. I'd like to know if there's any uh, time frame that this may, you know, what is the time frame this is going to take because I'm going to have to tell these employees something. <coughs> That's just it. I'm, I'm here to plead on behalf of those people to that we can hurry this process up. 
kind of hamstrung there, are you? Quite a bit. Can I, can I speak? Yes, Mr. Bowman. Uh, I, I talked to you the other day on the phone. Probably. Yes. I called quite a few. Uh, when I talked to Jimmy, I mean, the, the way that I understood, you were saying that the process was dead. Jimmy says, you know, you can still apply um, under the, the old procedures. We just haven't adopted the new rules and regulation where there will be a, a minimum bid, and that is in the um, going to the Natural Resources Committee. At least that's my understanding, and that we haven't set a meeting on that. But you know, from talking to you, your your concern was about you couldn't buy any adjudicated property. Is Jimmy in the in the building? I'm here. You, he can still buy it if he wants to go uh, put an application. He can still go forward with it the way we used to do it. It's just that the no bid procedure has not been finalized until we meet and pass our ordinance. And I think, I think Kevin, I don't think I'm going to put words in his mouth. I think, and Kevin is absolutely right, his two companies are one of our biggest customers. Correct. I think, correct me if I'm speaking out of turn, but I think Kevin would prefer to see us go to the new procedure. Uh, would you be? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we told him he can bring in the applications if, if he, you know, if this is going to be something that's not going to be worked out in the short term, that he can bring in the applications and pay for the appraisals, and we'll just have to do it that way. And all of that just came to my attention yesterday or the day before yesterday. Uh, I mean, just right now, there's a sign on the door on the eighth floor: no applications accepted. Uh, is that true? Yeah. But I mean, you would accept an application. Well, we will. Yeah, but, but the people come in and we tell them we will accept your application, but you need to know that you might not be getting the best deal at this point in time if you go this route. Because you could wait until we until we adopt the no bid process and go that route. Correct. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not get, It's not guaranteeing yeah, anybody anybody anything. It's just saying there's a possibility you could come out better with a no minimum bid. Okay. Does the sign on the door say no applications? None being accepted at this time. And we did that with it in conjunction with the city. Okay, so you go up there and you're not aware of the circumstances. You look at that and you, you go home. You don't understand why. Well, we, we got a, Do you have a letter of explanation as to why up there? So We tell them to, to contact us. Call us on the telephone. And so far we've had no one that has come in to, take, uh, to apply that after we explain the circumstances to them, we've had no one that has wanted to. They all want to wait. And we want to wait, too. We just wanted to hurry up. Well, <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> Mr. Smith, <laughs> I, I understand that. And I would think that by the first meeting, uh, uh, our, our next meeting, we'll have this resolved. You have to understand, the state goes and they pass legislation, and then they dump it on us, and we have to decipher it and ferret it out and decide what we want to do with it. This was not something initiated by the parish. The state allows us or has given us the opportunity to change it. And uh, so I would think that uh, by our next regular meeting, we'll have this issue resolved and passed and signed into law. So, a couple of weeks, you know, government moves slow, unfortunately. You know? Thank y'all for y'all's time. Appreciate it. Uh, Ms. Lynch? Let me ask. I guess my question. Mr. Smith, they have some more questions for you if you don't mind. No, Jimmy. My question is to Jimmy. Well, I want you to. You all have, you all have, I guess it, he said it's been several months, and we just got this, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, it's been since August the, probably August the 1st, because we knew the new law was coming into effect, and we didn't, we just thought it was going to be very easy for us to go into the new, and go to the new law, which went into effect August 15th. And we did what we were trying to avoid is we didn't want somebody we didn't want to get into a catch-22 where I've got half of the people that are no, I, I understand that but I get I, what I'm saying is that the Commission did, was not aware of it until that. Uh, it was actually a month ago Four weeks ago. oh because it laid over for two weeks yeah it did something like that because it was introduced at one meeting and then pulled at the next yeah Mr. Jenkins, well, Mr. President, I think I still have a problem with the idea of a sign being on the door saying no applications being uh, uh, accepted. I we mean, take that down is, right now. I, thank you, because I mean we got existing rules, and you have to comply with the existing rules until 
something changes. This should be a sign up on the door. We, we can take that down. I appreciate that. I yeah. agree. Just, just, you know, when people come in, just explain to them what the situation is so they may want to wait. In, in this case, I understand it's, 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 it's uh, impeding his business, and I'm very, very sorry about that. We'll get this done as quick as we can. Uh, most people, it's just a next door parcel property to their home, and it's not a big rush, but we'll do our very best. Mr. Lynn? Um, I received a phone call from Mr. Smith also, and immediately after hanging up the telephone, I called and asked to speak to either Jimmy or to Tim, and spoke with Tim Weaver, and he said that the sign was coming down that day, and that was two days ago. I don't go in that door, so I don't know. And then, then I immediately picked up the phone, called Mr. Smith, and said, Tim Weaver told me to tell you that you could go in and apply. And so I, and I didn't know that we had a sign up that said not accepting applications to purchase adjudicated property until Mr. Smith told me that it was up there. And now I knew that we were in the process of possibly passing legislation to make another option or to put it as an easier option. I just didn't realize that we were refusing that until um, Mr. Smith informed me of this. Well, can I tell you too that uh, Tim was very responsive and he immediately called me and let me know that we could continue the application process but the problem is it takes so long to do that and this new process is supposed to speed that up so it's almost pointless to put in applications in the old process if y'all are about to do the new one i was just thinking of a way for you to keep your 27 employees to keep right. to keep that going i understand uh mr cox i was just gonna say take sign down Perfect. just take sign down mr take pearson down. Well, one way or the other, those 27 employees are going to stay around because sooner or later he's going to get the property. So, I mean, it's not like he doesn't benefit from adjudicated property. I know the guys uh, that, 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 he's that he's employing certainly looks, look forward to, to refurbishing those houses and getting them ready and, and all that. But now it's, it's not like, you know, he's not going to benefit. So his company benefits from uh, the, the, the uh, rent uh, from, from those uh, those homes and so it does well I, I, I agree about reestablishing the, the community and all that but uh, certainly we're going to expedite as much time as possible to well, get I it done you're doing that. Yeah. but it does it does benefit our company at the same time if we don't have any houses to renovate we lay the people off and if I if I could Commissioner Pearson just <coughs> let me add, add this uh, Kevin as I've said uh, is a good good customer of ours and I wish for y'all's sake he could have brought some photographs and shown you some before and after of some of the properties this is just a side note because they are buying some really really nasty looking stuff and by the time they get through with it it's an asset to the neighborhood so and it's very fun to watch the neighbors right around realize how nasty their house is and they start cleaning up and painting themselves and all that sort of thing. It's really, it's, it's a wonderful service to them. I hate to see these people get laid off because they're stuck in limbo. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> all right. That concludes uh, public comments. Next, we'll move on. We'll have public hearing on the zoning case, please. Have zoning case P9. Freeport Development Corporation, the applicant requests a rezone property located at the end of Chartres Drive from R1B to R1H. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this zoning case? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition? <coughs> Next item, please. That concludes our zoning. All right, let's move to public hearing on ordinance. Ordinance number 5024, amend and reenact re section 21 code of ordinances to enlarge the boundaries of Fire District 1 to include boundaries of Fire District number 2. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this ordinance? Anyone in opposition? Next item, please. Ordinance number 5025, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and allowing the administrators to sell the tax interest therein. Anyone here to speak in favor of this ordinance? <laughs> anyone opposed? Next, please. Ordinance 5026, to authorize the transfer and acceptance of property known as the Selber Building from Foundation Property, LLC. Anyone here to speak in favor of this ordinance? Anyone in opposition? Move along. Ordinance number 5027, to amend and reenact Chapter 14 concerning correction to overweight permit fee schedule for roads and bridges. Anyone here to speak in favor of this ordinance? 
Anyone in opposition? Thank you. That concludes our public hearing, sir. All right, let's have ordinances uh, for final passage. Zoning ordinance. Zoning case P9, Shreveport Development Corporation applicant, request to rezone property located at Chartres Drive from R1B to R1H. Moved. Moved by Commissioner Thibodeau. Second. Second by Commissioner Pearson. Is there any discussion on the motion? Being none, let's vote, please. That passes. Next item. Ordinance number 5024 to amend and react reenact section 21 code of ordinances to enlarge the boundaries of fire district one to include boundaries of fire district two so moved second. by commissioner dominic seconded by commissioner mcculloch is there any discussion on this motion vote please that passes next item ordinance number 5025 declaring certain certain adjudicated properties to be surplus allowing the administrator to sell the tax interest therein so moved. moved by Commissioner Pearson, seconded by Commissioner Baker. Is there any discussion on this motion? If not, vote please. That passes. Next item, please. Ordinance 5026, authorized transfer of acceptance of property known as Selber Building. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Epperson, seconded by Commissioner Lynn. Is there any discussion on this motion? Being none, let's vote. That passes. Next. Ordinance number 5027 to amend and reenact re chapter 14 concerning correction to overweight permit fees. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Baker. Second. Second by Commissioner Thibodeau. Is there any discussion on this motion? Let's vote, please. <coughs> All right, that does it. It passes. Okay, next item. Ordinance for introduction. Ordinance number 5028. Providing for the incurring of debt and issuance of six million dollars limited tax revenue bonds. Ordinance number 5029 to repeal section two, code of ordinances to the, relative to the Department of Fleet Services. Ordinance number 5030, adopting and reenacting a new code of ordinances for the parish of Caddo to repeal certain ordinances. That is all the fine introductions are. All right, thank you. Next, uh, we have a <coughs> work session. Work session, work session minutes. minutes. Well, actually, we got one that's not on the agenda, and it'll have to wait. Let's do the October 18th minutes and do the motion. Moved. Moved by Commissioner Dominic. Second. Second by Commissioner Epperson. Is there any discussion on the motion to ratify the minutes of the October 18th work session? If not, please vote. That passes. Next. Resolutions. Resolution number 56, authorizing the parish administrator to negotiate the purchase of property for, for use as a new sheriff's office substation. So moved. Second. 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 Moved by Commissioner Cox, seconded by Commissioner Pearson. Any discussion on the motion? Please vote. Passes. Next item. Resolution number 57, approve the annual plan for the 2011 Section 8 housing program. So moved. moved by Commissioner Baker. Second. Second by Commissioner Epperson. Any discussion on the motion? Let's vote, please. Passes. Next item. Resolution number 58. Authorize the State Mineral and Energy Board to accept and advertise for oil and gas mineral leases as, as requested by Classic Petroleum. So moved. Second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Lynn. Is there any discussion on the motion? Any numbers vote? That passes. Next item, please. Resolution number 59. Authorize Louisiana Mineral Board to accept and advertise oil and gas mineral leases as requested by Classic Petroleum. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Epperson. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Lynn. Commissioner Thibodeau has some discussion. Uh, yeah. The, the, the number 60, 61, and 62, and 63 are all uh, of the same nature. Could we include that in a in Globo? And moved I'll by Commissioner that. Thibodeau that we in Globo all like ordinances, including 59, 60, 61, 62, and 63, seconded by Commissioner Pearson. Is there any discussion on that motion? Uh, just note, uh, Mr. President, that Resolution 62, the request is by Red River Land Service, and 63, the request is by Tapper Resources Incorporated. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So noted. Any more discussion? If not, we'll vote on the amended motion. <laughs> 
that passes in your business. In your business. And we'll we're adjourned. We're adjourned. NPL meeting. We, yeah, I'll just say that. Yeah.